Yo, what's up? It's me, LV. Learn some. All right, now in today's video, I'm gonna review a book. It's gonna be called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Carol DeWitt. This book is like one of the most important books to me right now. It helped me to understand what type of ideas that can come from a particular mindset that can be detrimental to what you want out of life and where you want to go in your life and stay tuned all right now the first thing i'm gonna review is a gentleman by the name of alfred bidet she mentions this guy in the book who created the iq test the intelligence test he's a frenchman psychologist created this test he created this test to differentiate which students weren't being benefited by the system in paris at the time the educational system so he can help them so Right there is one of the one of the big things that, that you can take away from this book is that the IQ test, if most people, they get caught up in intelligence and if it's like this, you're better. He created it to see who was not so they, he can help those who are you weren't benefiting from the system that was implemented. Just thought that you guys should know that that's why the IQ test was invented, but I digress. Let me go on to the book. The book, Carol DeWick, divides up the mindset into two different type of ideas on how you go about approaching situations. The first one is the growth mindset. This one entails that you seek out challenges. You believe that you can cultivate your skills with effort. Now, the fixed mindset, on the other hand, is the opposite. It believes that you are in this loop, like you're stagnant. You are who you are. So you must protect your identity. If anyone says something to you is involving criticism, you take that offensively because you believe that your intelligence is who you are. You have this. It is who you are. You can't change. You can't develop. You can't become a bigger person. Now, some of us, we have this on the left, the right, but most extremes, but most times it falls somewhere around in the middle. Whereas myself, I may lean towards more of a growth mindset. I constantly want to learn from other people. Criticism doesn't really bother me to the extent of it's not being disrespectful to me. So if you getting in to uh, some type of debate with me and you say I'm wrong about something, that doesn't offend me. I just go like, well, this is what I believe. This is what's right. You go from there and then we can grow from the situation because ultimately, I want to know the real answer. And that's one of the things that she goes over in the book, Mindset, is that people who are growth-minded feel the need to have accurate information about who they are. They want accurate judgment about who they are because how can they develop if they have this false idea of who they are? And on the other hand, the people in the fixed mindset, they develop this kind of ego towards who they are where they protect their identity at all costs. So when it comes to things like coping, they tend to think that as though like, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, I'm not this type of person, uh, people wouldn't accept this out of me, why would I ever do videos like this, this is not even in my personality, they say things like that, growth minded person, they'll say things like, uh, well, I can't do it now, but not yet, I I'm, I'm gonna get it, or they'll say things like, um, uh, one day I'll get it. Another great thing out of this book is that uh, Carol DeWick and her team did this experiment on these fifth graders. She had two groups of fifth graders. One were judged on their ability. One were judged on their personality. Personality. They said, you're smart. You must be smart to do this. You're pretty smart. That's how you did this. And another group, they are praised on their abilities. They are saying, wow, you must really work hard. Wow, this is hard work. Wow, you did you get the idea. So in the experiment, they were giving these puzzles. The first couple of puzzles were very easy, you know, and then they gave them the praise. And then they said you want to upgrade to another puzzle. This puzzle, based on the group, they said the abilities praise or the personality praise. There's like these uh these, these nuts. puzzles will be very challenging but you're smart enough to do it and the other group was they said that these puzzles are pretty hard but you'll really learn something out of this learn some 
Now, what was amazing is that when the puzzles got harder for the personality group, the group that were judged on, you're smart. They were, they quit so easy. They quit so easy. As soon as things got tough, they're like, I'm not smart enough. You know, I'm not doing this. And then they gave them the opportunity to go down to uh to the easier puzzles. You know what the kids that were praised on their personality said? They said, hell yeah. I'm going down to the easier shit because I, I'm not this person. You know, they, they had they fixed in their head by giving them a certain kind of praise that they are not that person who can do those type of puzzles because because if you're smart, you can do puzzles. But if you can't do these puzzles, then you're not smart enough to do these puzzles. So in the head of a, of a child that you tell them that they're smart, it's going to be that contrast. Now, if you praise the ability, let me tell you what happened in the ability group. The ability group, they went on to finish those puzzles. And then they say you want to do some more puzzles that are pretty hard, pretty tough, that would challenge you and you can get smarter from them. You will learn some. And you know what the kid said? Hell yeah, I want to learn more. I feel good. They're getting the praise. They're getting the, the reaction out of the adult uh, uh, to develop more. They're getting rewards in their brain. Dopamine receptors are saying, yes, I want more. I want to learn more because this is what I'm getting rewarded for. So that's another big takeaway from this book. The way that you praise people can ultimately End, end up hurting them in, in the long run. If you praise a person from being smart, for having it all right now, then you could hurt them in the future when they realize that it takes hard work and effort to sustain who you are. Now, in one part of the book, it's a principal giving a assessment on the children that he has at his school, and, and she's asking him a question that's saying, do you think that child you can see what a child child is going to be at this time. And this is what he said. Now listen up. An assessment in one point in time has little value in understanding one's ability and potential to success in the future. Now, this is some rah, 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 ja, ja, ja shit, but bear with me. This is ultimately everything that we pretty much know. Now, as, now we have to implement it. Now, if you say you're a type of person that said, like, I'm not this, I'm not that, I can't learn the second language, I can't develop myself, I can't do videos, I can't learn how to edit and all that stuff, speaking to myself, if you say you're that type of person, then you're going to be that type of person because you fixed in your head that you are fixed in this state. So you might as well Chalk up and, and let it go. But after reading this book, I realized that anything that I want to do, just set a clear goal for it and then let it and watch myself grow towards that in a year, five years, 10 years. Another thing I want to leave you guys with is this. This is the question. It's going to be two questions. Probably one or two, depending on how I feel. First question is, how long does it take a baby to walk? How long does it take? Now, when you think about that, think about how many things that you quit on before you was like, I'm not making no money in this and you just quit. Or think about the, the times that you're reading a book and you're just like, man, it's not getting interesting. So I I'm done with it. Think about all the times that you quit because it wasn't enough time. Not because, because it didn't take enough time or it took too much of your time. Think about all those things. And really think about this question because this question is ultimately like something I've been battling with for a very long time because I, I tend to believe that like things gotta gotta fucking happen, man. Things gotta happen. And 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 rather going through this book, reading it, and going online, you know, uh, reading more information about it, I've understood that this is like. It's so simple. Like, it's crazy how simple it is. But once you implement it and have it a part of your life, it's over. Every Like, you're going to do anything that you want. You're going to stay to it. And you're not going to be deterred in any type of way. And now the second question. When do you feel smart? When you're learning or when you're flawless or you do a great job at something and feel perfect at it? When do you feel smart? And with that being said, comment below, like the video, 
And until next time. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Learn something.